on the 23rd and 24th of November 2015 running our TTRP2 immersion event. The whole point behind the Tinker project is that it, it just links so much to English, maths, science and everything else that we do. It's telling me that there's a massive need for um, engineering school. It's a big focus of the Tinker Tailor Robot Pie project is exploring what the engineering habits of mind are. We're aiming them to try and fly two eggs over a wall uh, and they can do that with any of the kit that's available to them. And we're getting them to snap pictures when they think they are exhibiting the traits of engineers. So an immersion event is a form of innovative CPD that we've designed and trialled over a number of years now. Um, it involves various people in various roles. Um, firstly the project manager who is the creator of a palette of um, experiences to engage in service teachers in a minds-on and hands-on way. There's the thought leader or problem poser which will often provide the grounding for the problem and the inspiration for why we'll engage in this kind of thinking. There's a range of inspirational others. Um, these are often scientists or engineers or people in the field who can bring and provide new learning and new context for that topic. Um, there is the bridge. Uh, the bridge, how do I explain that? The bridge are people who can broker and bridge the conversations between two professional groups. Then there's quite a large number of pragmatists. These, in our case today, will be the teachers. They need to take some of the hooks and the tangible um, ways forward. How can they make uh, our vision for this project really come to life? And then the last very important part and role in the story is the narrator. A group of people or someone responsible for telling the story as it goes. It could be a filmmaker, it could be a photographer, it could be the way that we use Twitter to tell the story of what's happening. I think uh, what I found particularly useful today is how you can quickly build a team, work collaboratively with people in order to solve a problem creatively test your ideas out and see them work. So that's been really, really useful. I think the, these little minds um, that we want to encourage to be engineers, um, they do start off as engineers, that the children always laugh when a tower of bricks falls down. At some point they kind of stop laughing and it becomes less interesting. So what I'm interested in is how do you continue that excitement to to go on through primary education, secondary and university. What I hope is that teaching at this early level will encourage children to think like engineers and so when they actually come to us when they go into place of work, they're tinkerers, professional tinkerers. Together with Bill Lucas and Guy Claxton, I was one of the original authors of the Thinking Like an Engineer report and it's been fantastic to see how teachers here in Manchester and also our teachers in, in Hampshire and other parts of the South of England have taken engineering habits of mind to their hearts and tried to embed it within the curriculum. All the elements of the engineering habits of mind uh, fit so nicely within education, forget primary, it's just education. But come in here, they can talk to like minded people, have an idea of using a, a trebuchet, using some sort of elaborate rigging system, and they can try out engineering practices with really cheap components. The heroes have been a big, a big part, yeah, because it's nice to see uh, people who are still doing the courses at university to actually come and speak to us. And, you know, it's, as well as helping us, it's helping them stand in front of people and speak. So it's nice to get some inspiration and to hear where they've come from. Research concerning virtual fit is, is limited. And this is a computer that I finished building over the summer. We've got a long way to go with engineering in primary schools um, and trying to get senior management on board and trying to get other teachers to do it as well. Um, the opportunity to get hands on with a wide range of equipment that we may or may not decide to invest in, that's nice and handy. For me, it's, I think you've got it absolutely right, it's the, it's the doing stuff with your hands and for me, it's putting maths and physics to work. The way that the day is set up with presentations from professors and from uh, doctors and from PhD students and from undergraduates, I mean, that doesn't normally happen. Uh, yeah, the good thing about this for Bill and myself is to see our research being applied in practice and so testing the concept, if you like, because it was great to talk to all these engineers initially but then to actually see um, their habits of mind being incorporated in the curriculum um, is a really great experience for us. 